It's the final match of the 2024 Charlotte Regional Championships, the largest official offline competitive Pokemon tournament of all time. Wolf Glick is battling for the 8th Regional Championship of his decorated Pokemon VGC career, and it's Game 3. The winner of this one takes it all. Some of the most memorable plays in Pokemon are the flashiest predictions. Highlight plays are made from hard callouts and bold plays in the face of difficult situations. You're not going to see that in this game. But since we teased you like that, here's a good example. This play comes from Day 2 Swiss Rounds, one of the boldest plays we saw on stream this past weekend. Jody Azzarelli is staring down a lead of Smeargle and Golden Go from Enzo Reki, who had one of the most unique teams in Top Cut. Enzo often used this mode to leverage Smeargle's ridiculous support move pool and allow his Golden Go to set up with Nasty Plot, eventually sweeping with massive Make It Rains. Jody showed no fear, clicking Shadow Ball with his Fluttermane despite the chance that a follow me from Enzo's normal type Smeargle could blow the game wide open. But Jody got it right. Enzo went for Spore with Smeargle, and the Shadow Ball knocked out Enzo's Golden Go in one hit, removing his primary source of damage and basically sealing the game right then and there. Okay, back to Wolf. This man is one of the greatest Pokemon players of all time for many reasons, and one of them is his ability to predict. He made an incredibly similar play to the one we just showed last year at Orlando Regionals, where he won what is now the second largest tournament ever. The team that he used to win that event required these kinds of predictions to win. That was Wolf's Parish Trap team, which was powered by his ability to properly call out protects, switches, and terrestrializations with stunning accuracy. The team Wolf spent so much time in the lab building for Regulation F plays with a completely different style though. He said as much after a dominant victory on stream in round 7 of Swiss on day 1 at Charlotte. This season though my goal is to focus a little bit more on my battling preparation and my, my ability to kind of not necessarily win via team advantage but win via a play advantage and so going to this event I knew I wanted to focus on Pokemon that were kind of proven to be strong. I didn't want to look for any uh, like super out of the out of the box suggestions unless they really came came screaming at me and so um yeah. Now, a lot of the teams that Wolf built for the 2023 season focused on that team advantage. That Paris Trap team he used to win Orlando is an obvious example. Without dedicated answers to the trap, like ghost types or their own Gothitelle, some teams simply folded. The team he built along with longtime team building partner Marcus Stadter that the latter used to win Bochum Regionals was similar. Wolf and Marcus read the meta, found that the much maligned Iron Jugulus offered a unique combination of typing, stats, and moves to win, and Marcus was able to turn that into a regional championship. Wolf had a great weekend with this team as well for the record, finishing in top 8 at Knoxville Regionals with it. The team Wolf brought to Charlotte, on the other hand, took a different approach, aiming for decent to good matchups against as many teams as possible rather than taking aim at specific teams that he expected to dominate the meta that weekend. Now, of course, it's hard to argue with the results. Wolf didn't just make the finals, he was the front runner for the entire weekend. He went 9-0 on day 1 and didn't suffer his first and only set loss until round 13 against Steven Mia, who would go on to finish top 8. Wolf's finals opponent, Nicholas Donnelly, was playing on a similarly high level. Nick only lost to Wolf all weekend, continually clutching up despite the fact that this was his first ever day two at a Pokemon regional. Nick had a terrifying hyper offense team with equally threatening fast and slow modes. Tornadus, Urshifu, and Hearthflame Ogrepan threatened to sweep under Tailwind, while Fergaraf, Blood Moon Ursaluna, and Iron Hands dominated under Trick Room. By the time Wolf had to lock in his play for turn one of game three of the final set, he and Nick had already played eight games. We didn't get to see the first set, which Wolf won 2-1 and said was down to the wire in an interview after their second set, and set 2 was more of the same. In those games alone, you could already see the adjustments and counter-adjustments both players were making with all of that information from their previous games at their disposal. Wolf used his slow mode and trick room to take game 1. Nick responded by shifting to his own slow mode and using Terra Grass Iron Hands to take momentum in game 2. And then Wolf won Game 3, dealing just enough damage to Nick's Ursaluna to take it out after Life Orb Chip on Turn 1, opening up his Choice Scarf Urshifu to sweep as Nick left his Tornadus on the bench. Wolf talked about that dynamic in a quick interview after the set. This is actually the second set I've played with Nicholas. We played around 9 yesterday, another really close 3-game set. So having also, like, you know, at that point, four, you know, four prior games of experience in the matchup, like, things get a little wonky because, you know, you're adjusting to their adjustments, they're adjusting to your adjustments, and so it's almost like a little meta is forming just within this one matchup between players. So, yeah, there was a lot of things that I wouldn't have expected in a normal matchup that only kind of made sense in the context of this is our fifth, sixth game, you know, playing against each other. Game 7, 8, and eventually 9 in the final set of the day only added more layers to the matchup. Given Wolf's experience in regional finals and perhaps Nick's lack thereof, it was easy to think that the world champ was going to dial in and figure things out first. But Nicholas played with a combination of intelligence and unpredictability you rarely see from players reaching this level for the first time. Wolf just couldn't get a read. 
After Wolf won a close game one, Nicholas once again found an angle Wolf wasn't ready for, thanks to some brilliant positioning of his combination of Helping Hand Farigaraf and Focus Sash Urshifu Single Strike. And that's what's led us here. Not only the final game of the tournament, but game nine between these two players. They now have deep knowledge not only of their opponent's teams, but their preferred game plans and their habits. What did Wolf do? The exact same turn one that lost him game two. It looked dicey. Wolf sent his Ivy Cudgel into Nicholas's Ogre Pond once again, but it cost him his Terra. Blood Moon from Nick's Ursaluna took out the Ogre Pond, a trade that looked great for Nick at the time. That's an amazing trade for Nicholas, in my opinion. I feel like in this trade-off, every time we've seen Ogre Pond survive, because it just hangs on with a sliver from Hyper Voice, but this time, it faints, and so Wolf at least has been able to mitigate the damage of the Ursaluna Blood Moon, thanks to that parting shot, now able to bring out Urshifu for close combat pressure, but Nicholas now gets a free switch in as well. But after the new Pokémon came in, Urshifu for Wolf and Farigaraf for Nick, the positioning suddenly looked much better for Wolf. Sure, Farigaraf could Trick Room, and Blood Moon would have been terrifying under the reverse speed order, making Farigaraf a tempting target on this turn. But Urshifu's Unseen Fist ability meant Nick's only way to save Ursaluna was to switch it out. Tornadus was the only Mon on Nick's team that could take a close combat, and rather than cover that one incredibly specific possibility, Wolf went with the simplest play that covered the most options. Nick was the one who made a big call on this turn. If Wolf had targeted the Farigaraf here, Nick would have made significant progress with another big attack from Ursaluna, a Hyper Voice, or an Earth Power, but Wolf didn't fall for it. He called it correctly, the close combat KO'd, and without Ursaluna, Nicholas needed to hit a triple protect to have any chance of making the comeback with his own Urshifu. It failed on the second protect, and that's all she wrote. So long. Urshifu goes for the protect. It fails. It's not going to be able to save itself from this one. The flare blitz from the Incineroar is going to deal so much damage to the Urshifu to put it on one last life as the Farigaraf hopes to follow it up and get the KO with the Hyper Voice. And with that attack, Wolf Glick becomes your Charlotte Regional Champion, a time winner. The no King way. is back, ladies and gentlemen. He took three months off this game and came back and shows it's just as easy as riding a bike, only dropping one set throughout the entire tournament. He was the victor of the previous largest tournament of all time, and now he is the winner of the newly largest tournament of all time. If anything, this was a moment where a lot of players would have lost in Wolf's position because they would have felt the need to overpredict. In a moment like that, it's easy to get in your head and convince yourself the obvious play, a big fighting type move into a big normal type opponent, is somehow wrong. A big piece of Nick's success was his unpredictable nature. He was willing to make plays that left critical pieces of his team as sitting ducks on the field, but he knew if he made the call right, it would put him in a winning position. Sometimes that meant making a play like we saw in that last turn, where Nick said, you won't do the obvious thing, and I'll win the game because of it. It may not have worked there, but it was what earned him wins in both Game 2s in his stream matches against Wolf. Wolf himself said that it was a big part of why all three sets they played this weekend were so difficult, and why the first-time Day 2 player nearly took out the man who is now the most decorated Pokémon Regional Champion of all time. Now that we've had that third match and you're still able to take it, was there anything too different this time around that maybe caught you off guard? Yeah, no, like, uh, Nick's play is just really, really kind of hard to get a handle on. I, I basically realized that I wasn't going to be able to accurately predict him or really um, outplay him, so I focused a lot on macro and, and tried to cover, like, multiple plays at the same time without tunneling in on one. I think that was ultimately what, what, um, what led to my victory, but yeah, I mean, th that set very easily could have gone the other way. And this is that Wolf Glick magic. He can construct a team that only he can pilot, that requires hard read after hard read, and he'll take that and win the biggest tournament ever with it. And just a year later, he'll take a completely different approach, constructing a fairly standard balance team that can handle just about anything as long as you stay calm and play towards the game plan, and he'll take that and win an even bigger tournament with it. That, Pokémon fans, is what we call the World Champ Difference. Uh, close combat comes out, targets into the Ogre Pond, and Wolf Glick will be advancing to his second regional championship finals in just two attempts this season, getting second, of course, at Pittsburgh Regionals just a couple of months ago. He has not played in a tournament since then, and in his return, he is back in the finals. Thank you so much for watching, and subscribe to Beast Coast Pokemon for more. Go click one of these videos now. Do it.